This land is your land, this land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Hello, I'm John Grom, and this is the Right and Left Discussion Forum. Right and Left is a nonprofit corporation committed to the promotion of civil political discourse. Our sole purpose is to urge voters to give thoughtful consideration to the views of others, practice the art of persua persuasion rather than attack, be open to superior arguments, and demand the same behavior of our public officials. Today our panel will discuss compromising on issues both right and left. Each panelist will identify issues important to them and discuss where they would be willing to compromise. Our panelists today, starting on my left, are Jerry Ritzman, Vice President and Partner with Ritzman Pharmacies. On his left is Patty Haskins, retired math teacher and Democrat member of the Wadsworth City Council. On her left is Brian Lawbaugh, President of R&B Financial Consultants and member of the Medina County Republican Executive Committee. On his left is Dr. Ronald Chamberlain, retired senior research chemist. The beauty of democracy is that one opinion can be right without another being wrong, and that we all have the freedom to explain our opinion in any way we choose. However, civil behavior, courtesy, and common decency require that opinions be expressed in a respectful manner, and that opposing views be heard and considered fairly. A civil exchange of ideas can result in a meeting of the minds and a discovery of common ground. But when anger and intransigence prevail, only gridlock or a trampling of rights can result. We know that people of good will who respect objectivity and the opinions of others will find common ground even where none was thought to exist. Anger, self-righteousness, and contempt for the ideas of others are at direct odds with the aims of civil discourse and must be overcome before understanding and cooperation can be achieved. We would all like to win our, uh, our point of view, but we must first be willing to be won over. Changing our mind is not losing, and refusing to yield is not winning. We would like to begin our discussion this morning with uh, Jerry Ritzman. Jerry? Good morning, John, and today we're discussing, and let's get this Clear. We're going to give an issue that we think uh, we have a resolution to, and see what areas we would want to that we could compromise on that. That would be one way to approach okay. it. All right. Well, one issue that I've thought of that may not be uh, on the front burner would be the issue of the federal government being involved in higher education tuition financing. Mm -hmm. I think that the federal government should be completely out of the business of providing loans or guaranteeing loans to uh, fund higher education. Uh, I think that there's a parallel there uh, with how that the housing values were inflated uh, due to uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie, um, is it Freddie Mac, uh, all the, the federally guaranteed home mm -hmm. loans and how that busted <clears throat> and how people were underwater and I think the thing, same thing is happening in student tuition. Tuitions have risen over the past 10 years in no relationship to the cost of living increases in general. Uh, we see people coming out of school with degrees where they can't uh, find employment, having debts in the area of $50,000 to start with and more and I, and I believe that they, those debts are being facilitated by the ease of getting money to pay for tuition and that because the money's available the economics of the situation show that the universities and colleges can continue to raise tuition because there's money out there to chase after that higher tuition. Mm -hmm. I think the federal government over a period of five to seven years should be phased out of providing student loans and I think that would force then the colleges and universities to be uh, more uh, cognizant, pay more attention to what their tuitions are in reality to what the cost of living is. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, where would I be willing to compromise? I don't know if uh, state governments could put a uh, tuition cap, in cap increases in tuition year to year. Uh, temporarily, that may be a, a, a way to hold it. But I think eventually all of that uh, involvement should go away. Well, you're trying to uh, end uh, assistance to underprivileged people to get an advanced education, and I think you're waving a red flag in front of at least two of our liberals. Well, uh, what, what, <laughs> how do you feel about that, Patty? <coughs> uh, sure. Um, yeah, you waved the red flag. I, I think that, that uh, loan, first of all, there already are caps that the state has imposed on state universities as to the percent of increase that they can have. So they can't just go out and raise tuition 20 percent. There are limitations already placed mm -hmm. by the states. They've gotten out of control. Um, and you are correct. Students are graduating with 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in loans, and those are loans that they cannot default on. Um, so if, even if you well, they can, they can default, I guess. They can't go ba they can't bankrupt out no. of them. Mm -hmm. um, so there is obviously a problem with that. Actually, you know, I, in my opinion, I think the, the federal government should be providing more to, you know, more scholarships as opposed to loans. There are, and so that students that are unable to uh, obtain a higher education could do so. Um, now, where would I compromise on that? I think that there should be requirements, more requirements on the loans themselves. That the loans, for example, have to go directly to education. You can't use, you know, because some people take out the loan and then never finish college mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. use it for, you know, whatever they want Buy because there are no restrictions on it. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Subprime mortgage. Exactly. So that you know, we need to have more control of who the loan goes to. There could also be a, uh, a requirement that you perform at a certain level on that scholarship. If you don't perform at this level or on for that loan, or you don't take this minimum number of classes while you're doing it, you're, it's immediately mm -hmm. cut off. And yeah. then there could be some other penalties yeah. involved with that. Yeah. Um, but to you know, with the cost of education, and I don't think yeah. it's going to go down dramatically um, to offset. The cost that would, you know, of eliminating mm -hmm. the federal grants, even though you did mention phasing in, which mm -hmm. was, I'm assuming, what you're talking about. I don't think that cost of education is going to go down mm -hmm. sufficiently, and you would prevent many students and many, you know, young Americans to be able to have a higher education, mm -hmm. which I think is an absolute must yeah. at this time. So, are you saying that you feel? federal government is the only place for those underprivileged or economically disadvantaged people to uh, obtain tuition assistance? Oh no, there's other places. Oh, okay. there are, right. I, and I realize there are, are there are corporate scholarships, there are, there are many different scholarships, and if you happen to fit into that niche, you're in good shape. You, you, really, I, I think for the people that it's hardest for are the middle income families. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you are extremely poor, there is money available, but if you're a middle income family, and you don't have 12 kids, and it is very, very difficult. Uh, yeah. and, and having put two kids through college, I can tell you quite well how expensive yeah, it is. Too. I'm sure all of us have. Yeah. Ron, you look like you've got some thoughts on this well, subject. <clears throat> yes, uh, thinking of uh, <clears throat> from graduate school, I uh, <clears throat> existed on federal funds mm -hmm. through the, in the form of the project support for the projects in which I was involved. Uh, very expensive in the sciences to uh, to fund research. Uh, long story, I wound up spending an extra year in grad student because the funds kept evaporating and had to, new projects had to be found. But uh, I also went to an undergraduate school that made the conscious decision not to accept federal funds on the grounds that he who pays the piper calls the tune. And very successfully too, but it uh, became well endowed. I went to that school on scholarship money. Mm -hmm. Now, Pell Grants and other government aid, I think it's quite important. Uh, I really do, because uh, it kind of speaks to a, a more general problem, I think, Jerry, uh, about how much the federal government should get involved mm -hmm. in, in private lives mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and what the, the repercussions thereof. And with that, I certainly agree with you that there, there are, there, there is that. But, 
Uh, at the same time, uh, without this kind of money, uh, without this help involved, either from private sources in the case of my undergrad school or in the case of, of uh, government sources for, for almost all, all other schools in the world, uh, it's just not going to be possible for many, many students, and not just low-income students, for many students to go to college. Now, uh, why go to college? That's a whole other issue as yeah. to whether it should be a four-year degree, a four-year degree with graduate. But you need to put money into <coughs> education, particularly in the areas where we need it, because this is a job creator. This is a yeah. wealth creator. Mm -hmm. uh, people with higher educations, people who are trained, however high they might go in the sciences, in the, uh, in the engineering disciplines, in the things that we need these days in a modern economy, in a modern society. Yeah can only come about by some kind of support in getting them in there. Yeah. I think it's important for all of us in the form of our government to support this effort. Yeah. I have a notion that this subject could go on for the next two hours. <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to move on. <coughs> Patty, we would like to tap your brain and find out what <coughs> is important to you that you'd be willing to compromise on and how. Uh, this is one, again, that's not really out in the forefront at all, all times, but it's the filibuster issue in the Senate. Mm. And there are many calls right now to eliminate the filibuster. Um, you know, the problem with the filibuster is unless you have 60 votes, you can't break that filibuster. And that, unfortunately, then a minority, and this can be either side, it's been used by both parties, yeah. although it's now the Democrats screaming because mm -hmm. it's being used against them. Now, in all fairness, it has been used a lot more than it has in the past, mm -hmm. in the last few years. But it brings the work of the Senate to a grinding halt. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it does, there does need to be some changes in that. Now, I mean, as far as my compromise, it would be to, you know, continue to have the filibuster. I mean, there were reasons for this in the past, and it was to allow the minority to have a voice. Um, but I, I think that if you're going to continue with the filibuster, then that person that's invoking it really ought to get up and speak for that time and do the filibuster as it was intended. Presently, all they have to do is say, I'm going to invoke a filibuster, and immediately, they don't have to talk. So you don't see like in the movies where they're standing there getting drinks of water and reading the, <laughs> the dictionary, you know, out loud. I, I think that if a person is willing to invoke the filibuster and all the ramifications that are following it, they ought to be able to stand up and, and actually... You'd like to see Jimmy Stewart I want to see Jimmy Stewart <laughs> collapse again, yes. Yes. So. Hollywood does it right sometimes. <laughs> uh, anybody have a comment on that? Uh, yeah, I suppose I do, uh, in that uh, I, when I think about the filibuster, I, you know, I, I've got visions of Strom Thurmond trying to mm -hmm. stop civil rights activity back in uh, 1947 or wherever it was. Right. And, reading his wife's recipes and, uh, right. and all of that. I don't know that there should, uh, I, I know that there's, I don't understand how the mechanism of cloture works right. exactly. You need a, some sort of a super majority to, to shut off the uh, filibuster, but I, uh, there's just something uh, that, that innately bothers me about being able to delay and or to stop something indefinitely right. uh, uh, until somebody else comes around to your point of view. Well, at, at the present time, Democrats are in favor of getting rid of it, and Republicans, because of the way the power is balanced right now. Yeah, I, I know, and they'd be smart to just recognize that the, the world is going to change again, and that maybe it would be to everybody's benefit to get rid of it. Well, cloture has been invoked in this, uh, uh, during this president's term, mm -hmm. um, but they took a lot of heat for invoking cloture, mm -hmm. which, but there's ways to block the cloture mm -hmm. vote with a supermajority. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's very, very uh, complicated. Mm -hmm. I, I do understand the idea of giving the minority a voice, mm -hmm. but again, uh, I mean... But you're giving them total... Uh, total uh, control. Yeah. I mean, minority now can have total control, yeah. and they don't even have to work for it. I mean, yeah, that's at least Strom Thurmond did have to <laughs> read those recipes, yeah. so... Yeah, you know. yeah. Brian, uh, You've been thinking about some issues. I'd like to hear about that. Well, you know, in the news uh, recently, we've heard a lot about gun control. And uh, I'd be willing to discuss that and compromise on a few issues that hopefully would make uh, everyone happy. Uh, 
but well, I thought... Would, well, start off with what would make you the most happy. Well, I, th I think... Forgetting about compromising yeah, for just a moment. I, I think there's room to uh, enforce all the laws that are on the books. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not adverse to a waiting period, a mm -hmm. cooling down, a cooling off period. Mm -hmm. um, one, two, three days. Mm -hmm. um, currently, in most states, you can, they have insta-check. You can go in and walk out with that handgun or that rifle. Um, I think that could be a, a discussion mm -hmm. uh, about how the mechanism of purchasing a gun. Uh, I'm not in favor of, in some instances, uh, I have family that live in New Jersey and you need a permit just to purchase a handgun. Mm -hmm. And the state can, uh, you know, even though they say they have 90 days, they can send your application back to you on the uh, 89th day and say that it's incorrect and then you have to resubmit mm. and your 90 days starts all over again. Uh. Um, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm keenly aware of situations where people have tried to purchase a handgun or a rifle in those particular types of states and uh, it's been months, you know, it's been not just 90 days, it's been six months, nine months. Um, mm. and they just drag their feet. So I think there needs to be something there. Um, I think the, uh, the background checks could be brought up to speed. You know, I think of uh, when a police officer pulls you over and he has that computer in his car and he runs your tag, he knows a lot about you. And I think we could use some of that technology uh, that the FBI could have at their fingertips, the ATF, and when you uh, go in and you present your driver's license to purchase a handgun, I'm sure there's a wealth of information they could find mm -hmm. out uh, about that. Mm -hmm. And that might stop uh, uh, some of the issues that we, we see, uh, but uh, criminals will always you know, get guns. Now with that being said, I thought maybe we could negotiate a little bit here. Um, I thought maybe we could talk a little bit about abortion, because mm -hmm. that's a real issue uh, with the Republican Party. That's been a, uh, a part of our platform for many years. And I think that there could be some things done with that that would make it all the more palatable for everyone involved. Um, so, you know, with the Second Amendment, I'd be willing to uh, make some of those compromises, but I would like to discuss a little bit about uh, some of the things that have sort of been written into the law as far as abortion is concerned. And that's a real, uh, you, you know, that's a hot topic. I, uh, and I hope that it would never come up. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's almost impossible yeah, to. Yeah, do. and 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 the yeah. issue for me is with this particular issue is that it's become more than what I think it should have been. Mm -hmm. It's become a method of birth control, mm -hmm. and when people can use that and tax dollars are funding that, that's where I have an issue. Mm -hmm. um, it maybe it goes along the same lines of uh, these federal loans and grants that uh, Jerry mm -hmm. seems to have an issue mm -hmm. with. I, I don't think the government should be involved in subsidizing those types of things because I find that, uh, a, you know, morally a real struggle. But I'm willing to compromise uh, on that. If you would have to go all the way back and compromise on when life begins. Uh, I mean, that's mm -hmm. the, the, it, it. All hinges that's on that, mm -hmm. uh, and that, um, uh, and a woman's right to control everything with her own body. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Boy, you, you don't make it easy, do you? I mean, well, <laughs> you know, if we're going to compromise and negotiate, uh, you know, the Second Amendment is a, is a, uh, is a real sticking point with yeah. people. And I think that's, that's to me, uh, in my own mind, that's, that's a pretty good place to start. You've laid two issues uh, on the table, and I can see Ron is just dying to talk about one of them. I don't know which one. <laughs> John loaned me a book. Recently. Light me up. John loaned me a book recently and he talked about uh, reason and emotion and emotion is the elephant and reason is the rider on top of the elephant but really the elephant's controlling the rider here. This is an emotional issue, this is mm -hmm. something ingrained in, in uh, whatever your upbringing is, whether you have a religious upbringing or a non-religious upbringing or, or however that might have changed over the years and that's what makes it so difficult to legislate or not to legislate because it's such a deeply emotional issue. and. Uh, Compromise is very difficult in that respect. Uh, the Second Amendment is the same way, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, I, uh, I, I have a, a cousin I, I meet on Facebook, and uh, I, we were talking, she had posted up one of these things that guns don't 
kill people, people kill people. And I told mm. him, you know, and it was something about the Second Amendment. They'll post this if you agree. So I says, you know, that's that's a disingenuous comment. She says, blah, blah, blah. you know, she, mm -hmm. I says, no, I, I agree with the, you know, I pulled the Second Amendment by all means, but. Uh, you know, there's more to it than that. And here's a link to our discussion we had recently. And she wrote back and says, uh, I'm not interested, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the emotional part took yeah, over. Yeah, the emotional yeah. part took yeah. over. In, yeah. case, you know. yeah. in my case, I tend to let the reasoning take over, <laughs> which can be a mistake. Well, why don't you throw your own topic out there on the well, table? Well, uh, mine is, again, something of, of, a, of an emotional issue in a way. Uh, environmental issues and government thereof and uh, I was going to talk about the Athabasca tar sands and the XL pipeline but I think I'll stick with fracking a uh, very hot issue now in, uh, in Ohio particularly and uh, environmentally uh, potential disaster now the drilling part of fracking there's two stages of this first you got to drill the hole now the drilling muds and the compounds used thereon have been handled for years and uh, to some extent disposed of in inappropriately but there are some regulations in place to allow that. The fracking part is once the hole is drilled, you have to inject um, particular material to force the under pressure to force the shale layers apart, and uh, those involve certain other other uh, noxious substances down in there to facilitate this. Plus, huge amounts of water. Water is a finite resource unless we decide to electrolyze something and get more water by burning the hydrogen later <laughs> that mm -hmm. we get, which has to come from water, by the way, uh, we can't reuse it. It, it's, it, gets, it gets wasted, it's uh, difficult to treat, it's contaminated with things that are very hard to remove. So uh, as an environmentalist, I'm very, very cautious about the concept of fracking to get uh, natural gas and, and, uh, and petroleum compounds out of this. As a compromise, yeah. I think we need it. I think it's a it's an it's an excellent thing to uh, reduce our dependency on foreign sources of, uh, of of fuels and petroleum building blocks for all the other substances that we use in our lives. Uh, the compromise is I think you I would be willing to see it happen to go ahead with with all speed if we can somehow get environmental controls on here and work out ways of, of treating and recovering the substances used. Uh, I want to see that happen on a technological basis and governments to hold off on approvals until these things are demonstrated to be in place. Mm -hmm. One of the problems I've had with just about every environmental issue uh, is that the, uh, uh, the arguments on both sides tend to be exaggerated and distorted uh, and uh, to collect facts is a very, very difficult thing. I still think about snail darters and white spotted owls and, mm -hmm. you know, that couldn't live anywhere but the old forest, but they found them nesting in Kmart signs and <laughs> things. Uh, the, uh, and currently, I think, uh, the, uh, the, well, the whole thing with, uh, with uh, corn ethanol uh, in our fuel and all of the, the misinformation about that, and I go back to thinking about uh, fracking has been going on for a long time. In fact, mm -hmm. here in Medina County, it's been going on. And I don't, uh, I, all of a sudden, it's a hor <coughs> excuse me, a horrible thing. And I don't quite understand what the truth is and, and what is not the truth. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I get so tired of hearing things mm -hmm. be exaggerated and spun to where the average voter doesn't know what to support and what not to support. And it's particularly bad with I, I mm -hmm. think with the, with environmental issues. Yep. Uh, I mean, if you're a, a, an avowed environmentalist, you don't want to see anything change. Uh, and well, in the case of the of the so-called tar sands, it's bitumen, not tar. There's a te technical mm -hmm. difference. Tar is made <coughs> from coal. To, from coal. <laughs> the bitumen that that occurs there has to be pumped, has to be removed from the ground by means of somehow diluting it, either by by steam and heat or by mm -hmm. solvent extraction, <coughs> and the issue is <coughs> it's, it's a vast wasteland that they're creating up there in Alberta. You see pictures of it from the air. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the Canadian deposits are too deep for strip mining, so they've got to use the solvent extraction. Now we've got to pump it. Mm -hmm. And we're pumping it until recently across Nebraska, across mm -hmm. the Ogallala Aquifer, which mm -hmm. supplies the water for most of the breadbasket of the United States. Mm -hmm. Now. That's been renegotiated. It's the pipeline is going to be going to a different place now, and, and that's not quite so much of an issue. But uh, I just think of oil spills. 
Mm -hmm. I would love to see good, reasonable debates like this about issues like that yeah. uh, without having participation on the part of people who have been bought out by one special interest or another. But I don't know how you can do that. Um, right. Having this type of a discussion has been a dream of mine for a long time. Uh, to to have people that can unemotionally talk about contentious issues and, and not get uh, all uh, uh, bothered about uh, the, uh, the exaggerations and all that uh, that go on. But uh, anyway, any uh, we've got just about a minute and a half. Anybody got another <laughs> topic you'd like to throw out there? Immigration. <laughs> You for it or against it? <laughs> um, I think we need to really look at it. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, when we really don't understand living here, what the problem with immigration is. But when you have relatives that live on those border states, Arizona, Texas, um, California, <laughs> you really get you really mm -hmm. get a sense yes. of the issue, and uh, we really we really need to sit down and and come up with a comprehensive strategy, not mm -hmm. not just uh, from, you know, letting people come into the country, uh, you know, automatic citizenship, things of that nature, but a real strategy. And I think that's one thing that's missing when we yeah. talk about the environment. We really don't have a policy that, that yeah. you can really lean on. Uh, I, I heard a conversation on the radio this morning. Somebody said that there had been a, uh, some type of a survey taken internationally about the question that would you move to the United States if you had a chance and uh, somewhere between 500 and 700 million people said yes uh, yes we need <laughs> <laughs> we need immigration laws of uh, of some sort we well listen need immigrants. <laughs> I want yeah. to uh, uh, thank you all for your comments and I want to thank the uh, audience for uh, for tuning in uh, to learn more about right and left incorporated please visit our temporary website right and uh, Le I get that screwed up every <laughs> week. Rightandleft.org. To become a volunteer or to make a monetary contribution to Right and Left, please contact me, John Grom, at 330-336-2213. And I'd like to leave you with this quote from Albert Einstein. Whoever undertakes to set himself up as the judge of truth and knowledge is shipwrecked by the laughter of the gods. Thank you.